So let's go to Mike Seidel, who is live for us in Tampa. And Mike, you know, we're just showing the latest satellite and radar and those outer bands come lashing in. You, you know, you had told us at the airport they've already canceled flights for today. Yeah, and for good reason. It's not so much about the surge per se. The airport sits at 10 feet above sea level. We don't expect the surge to get that high in the Tampa Bay area. We're forecasting the Hurricane Center four to seven feet, but it's the roads in and out of the airport, uh, which may be closed by flash flooding and just the whole nature of the, the beast, you know, hurricane coming at Florida. So all flights canceled today. We heard from the FAA late this morning and they are seriously thinking about rerouting traffic into Fort Lauderdale, Miami, and the Palm Beaches. So those three airports may be impacted indirectly because of what they're doing and because of the hurricane coming across Florida. And again, tomorrow, Charleston, Savannah, those airports too will certainly be impacted in Myrtle Beach. Uh, let's go back to the radar. Behind me first, you can see the very threatening skies. Storms are coming at us, but it's gonna take a while. They're not coming directly at us. They're rotating around the outer periphery of Idalia. Key West just had a gust of 45 miles an hour. They've had a third of an inch of rain in a half an hour. That's pretty good rainfall and gusty winds. That's that squally weather, that tropical band you can see coming across uh, the lower keys and bands up to Cape Coral. So later on this afternoon, we'll start getting the first indirect impacts from Idalia with those outer rain bands. And then the worst of the weather is more than likely the strong gusty winds, the strongest winds gusting 50 to 60 miles an hour will occur after midnight tonight. By the way, we are on around the clock all night tonight. We've got continuous coverage. We have 11 crews in the field. Top that 11 crews in the field. Live coverage, more updates. Stay with us. Uh, Mike Seidel is in Tampa, Florida, where obviously they're bracing for some of the worst of the impacts. And Mike, those are going to be able to or those are going to begin to start here in a few hours. Yes, the outer bands will be uh, scraping in here in the next few hours, Alex. We can show you where they are. We're looking out to the Gulf of Mexico across Tampa Bay. That is the I-275 Skyway Bridge in the uh, foreground, the Gulf behind it. But you can see uh, the very threatening skies in the distance. Now in radar, we can show you the ground truth. Those are the storms that are wrapping around the outer bands of Adalia. They've already hit parts of Lee and Collier County down in southwest Florida. Key West had a gust of 45 miles an hour and a half an inch of rain last hour. So that's kind of typical of what these bands are producing. We also had an earlier tornado warning in southwest Florida. So there is that threat continuing right on through tonight and Wednesday morning. Uh, the worst of the weather here will be after midnight tonight. We think winds could gust 50, maybe 60 miles an hour on the coast, a little lighter inland. And that certainly is at the threshold for potential uh, power outages in this area. Schools are closed today and tomorrow. Tampa International, all flights, all 400 canceled today. On uh, Wednesday, they've already canceled about 70% of their entire schedule. So go, we offer you good luck getting a seat tomorrow, and maybe you'll get a seat on Friday, but uh, do check with your airlines because it's going to be touch and go tomorrow. Depending on those squalls, the feeder bands that come wrapping in around the backside. So Mike Bettis, we're going to be dealing with that tomorrow. And also the wind, once it goes by our latitude later on this evening, is going to come in from the west and southwest. And that's going to start pushing the water up in the uh, Tampa Bay area and all these little nooks and crannies. And we'll see what kind of surge values we end up with. But right now, storm surge warning, four to seven feet in this general area. Mike Seidel reporting for us live. Mike, thank you so much. And more from Mike coming up for you in just a little bit. That's what's happening here inland in Gainesville. We want to go to Tampa where we have meteorologist Mike Seidel. Mike Seidel, I'm, hopefully a lot of people are getting out of the area there. Yes, indeed, Jackie. Uh, mandatory evacuations kicked in here yesterday afternoon. Hotels on the beaches have closed. Basically, it's the barrier island areas at Zone A including Clearwater Beach and St. Pete Beach and down the coast towards uh, the beaches uh, near Sarasota and Bradenton. We're looking out to the south and look at that. Look at that scary sky. Well, we've got the contrast with a bright sun bleeding a little bit through the overcast, but you can see a bit of a shelfy way out there over the Gulf of Mexico. And on radar, we can get the ground truth. Those storms are moving at us, but not directly at us. They're generally rotating around the eastern side, the far eastern side of the hurricane. And as a result, it's not going to rain here probably for about another hour where we are in the bay here in Tampa. But those uh, storms, those squalls could produce wind gusts as high as 45, maybe 50 miles an hour. We had a 45 mile an hour wind gust in Key West and the gusty winds with the rain and the lightning. So that's just the uh, early taste 
of what that hur of what the hurricane's going to do with us, uh, uh, Mike Bettis, along with the surge, which really won't uh, pick up until it goes by us and we get that onshore southwest flow. Right now, the winds are southeast, uh, running at about 10 miles an hour. We've had some gusts at the airport, 15 to 20. By the way, no flights in and out of Tampa today. Mike? All right, Mike, thank you so much for the update. We'll talk more with Mike throughout the afternoon. Let's start things off this hour with Mike Seidel. He's in Tampa. Mike, obviously the right side of the cone. Tampa, they were watching Ian very closely this year, uh, last year, I would imagine, this year with Adalia. Again, a lot of concern as the storm moves closer. Yes, indeed, and now we're starting to see the uh, fringe effects. The outer band is approaching us. Look at that, out over uh, the uh, bay here, looking almost due south. Towards uh, 275, the bridge takes you down towards uh, St. Pete and down towards Sarasota and Bradenton. And look at that uh, shelf cloud and that scud over there. I don't see anything rotating. There are no warnings right now, but it's coming at us at about 30 miles an hour, uh, coming in from the northwest, or I should say moving northwest uh, from the southeast. So what's going to happen here is we're going to get some gusty winds and some heavy rain in the next half an hour or so. Uh, the winds may gust up to uh, 35 or 40 miles an hour. I suspect that'll be about it. There's not much lightning with this particular BAM, but you can see down on the south there is more lightning, and we've had the earlier tornado warnings. As far as the surge goes out here, still thinking four to seven feet. Again, it's uh, very uh, localized based on the nooks and crannies around uh, the Tampa St. Pete area, Tampa Bay, Old Tampa Bay, and then the uh, intercoastal between Clearwater and Clearwater Beach. Now. The mandatory evacuation kicked in yesterday for Clearwater Beach and the Barrier Islands. That is Zone A. Airport, no flights today, all 400 canceled. And tomorrow they've already canceled about 70% of arrivals and departures. So, uh, Mike, uh, this is the first sign of the hurricane. It'll be some uh, wind and rain, but we've got a long way to go. And it won't be until after midnight and tomorrow morning that we get those stronger wind gusts, 50 to 60 miles an hour, the power outages, and then that push from the southwest bringing the water up this way, and we'll likely have waves crashing over the seawall. Mike? It's going to look a whole lot different tomorrow, that's for sure. Mike, thank you for the update. And uh, a hurricane that's just way too close to call for us there. Good afternoon. Mike Seidel here in Tampa Bay. And the first squall, the first outer rain ban, ran, rain ban of Vidalia has hit us here. Winds have gusted 35 to 40 miles an hour. Look at the bay here. This is almost like a lake a couple of hours ago. Now we got water splashing over the wall. And here in the foreground, this was dry ground, literally, until about 45 seconds ago. The water has been pushed up across the beach here at the restaurant and is now going all the way under the uh, restaurant here. Uh, we're safe. It's, it's going to back off once the wind backs off, but it goes to show you it doesn't take much. This is one outer rain band with a gust of 40, and it's already pushed the water up here. Now, granted, it'll back out before we get the real push after midnight tonight. Some very heavy rainfall, no lightning to speak of at this point. We t tend not to get a whole lot of lightning with tropical rain bands, but the visibility is down now to about a mile, less than a mile, and we've got white caps out here and the waves crashing on the seawall, not a whole lot of water crashing over. That is certainly going to change as we get into tonight and tomorrow here in the Tampa St. Pete area. The storm surge warning is for four to seven feet. Again, highly dependent where you are. There'll be overwash away from the surge zone. We'll have some heavy rainfall. There could be some inland flash flooding and there's a flood watch up through tomorrow night into Thursday morning. And because the storm goes by, that doesn't mean we're over with the impacts. The winds are still going to be hauling around to the southwest as it goes up towards Jacksonville into Georgia and South Carolina. So we're going to have that push of water at least through Wednesday and Wednesday night. High tides tomorrow morning about 4 and then tomorrow afternoon about 2.30. Those are the high tides of concern. So Mike Pettis, uh, Felicia, it doesn't take much. One squall. Already we got the water here about 6 to 8 inches deep in the foreground. We've got big waves in the background and heavy rainfall continuing to come down here with a squall. This will end and then we'll have more squalls. And as we get deeper into the evening, and overnight, the weather will go downhill with likely power outages and storm surge. Felicia? Man, Micah, a good indicator there of what it's going to look like with those um, rain bands moving through. Thanks so much, Mike. Other side of the state, down towards the Tampa area, already seeing some of the effects of the storm. Uh, meteorologist Mike Seidel, he's in Tampa. Hey, Mike. 
Hey, Alex, we just got hit by the first squall, the outer rain band from the hurricane, Idalia. Uh, winds gusted at nearby Tampa Airport to 40 miles an hour. And out here, we got just uh, lashing rain. The water got pushed up around the seawall. And you can see now it has retreated. And we've got uh, some waves, maybe, you know, ankle slappers. But this uh, part of the bay was generally almost like a lake when we got out here several hours ago. So now we have some uh, action on the water. But as quickly as it came in, in about six or seven, Seven minutes the winds backed off and then the rain has now basically virtually stopped so they're quick hitters and they really pack a punch and as we get the rain bands closer to the center later tonight and Wednesday morning those are gonna have the higher wind gust maybe here in Tampa St. Pete up to 50 or 60 miles an hour and that's when we have to worry about the power outages and then that persistent wind once the storm goes by our latitude to the north off to the west in the Gulf the winds are gonna come around to the west and southwest and that's going to push the water up into these bays and these inland tributaries and looks and crannies around the Tampa Bay area. And there is going to be storm surge flooding. How much is really dependent on how strong Adalia gets in the next uh, 15 to 20 hours? Because tomorrow morning, 9, 10 a.m., Mike Bettis, it goes inland, and that's it for strengthening. So it's got, it's got a lot of room to grow, but by uh, tomorrow morning, that's it, fortunately, and then it will weaken as it gets inland, but there's still going to be a lot of rain and flooding as it goes into the southeast. Far-reaching impacts even well after landfall. Very good point there, Mike. Already feeling the effects in the Tampa area. That's where we find meteorologist Mike Seidel. Hey, Alex, yes, we got hit pretty hard, about 2.20 Eastern. Let me show you the uh, shelf cloud that came at us before that squall came in, that tropical squall right in from the south across St. Pete. The wind gusted 40 miles an hour over Tampa International. By the way, no flights today, all 400 canceled. And tomorrow they've already canceled about three-quarters of the schedule in and out of TPA. Uh, what happened is as the wind picked up, we had big white caps. Waves were crashing a little bit over the seawall. And all this water you see here came rushing around the seawall and then down under the restaurant. And this is going to sit here for the time being because uh, it has really not a whole lot to, way to get out. And we're going to have more of a push of the water as the winds later tonight into Wednesday morning through Wednesday blow onshore from the west and southwest. So that'll pile the water up into the Tampa Bay area, all the estuaries, the little nooks and crannies uh, in the intercoastal. And that's why we have the storm surge warning, four to seven feet, and also the mandatory evacuation for the uh, bar basically the barrier islands, the really compromised uh, spots with the uh, higher surges like Clearwater Beach, North Reddington Beach, down towards uh, the the key of the Siesta Key area. So that's what we're looking at right now, just a break in that one squall, the first one of the day. Winds are light. Right now, still from the southeast, but again, the worst of the weather here in Tampa St. Pete moves in later tonight into Wednesday, and that's when we'll have that surge risk and localized flash flooding. Inland, it's going to be about the flash flooding and the risk of some power outages, especially if we do get the stronger wind gust over 60 miles an hour. We'll see what wraps around, but right now, Mike Bettis, there is another batch of rain and lightning coming right up at us from southwest Florida, so we're not certainly out of the uh, woods for heavy rain, gusty winds for the next uh, three or four hours. Mike Seidel for us right now in Tampa. Mike, thank you very much for that. You know, we've got a lot of different impacts to watch. It's going to be heavy rain. Right now, I want to turn things over, though, to Mike Seidel, our meteorologist there in the Tampa area. Mike, you're already feeling the impacts. Uh, you've gotten some of those heavy, gusty rain showers. Yes, indeed, about 2.20 Eastern, we got hit pretty hard. It didn't last very long, but, boy, uh, let me see. If we get that shelf cloud up, Christina Westbrook back there in the uh, back row in Atlanta, let me know. We'll try to get that up. We got it up. Christina, you're the best. I owe you some donuts uh, one morning. And that's the view of the sky looking south over 275 about uh, seven or eight minutes before we got hit. That's the shelfie, everything coming in. We got the blast of wind. The sand started blowing around. It was like a sandstorm. And then this is what happened. Heavy rain, gusts to 40 miles an hour. Uh, we had a little bit of overwash over the seawall, and we had water coming around the seawall under the restaurant. Uh, meanwhile, Charles Peake had the drone up earlier today. Just to give you an idea of the intricacies of the waterway, Tampa Bay, Old Tampa Bay, Hillsborough Bay, uh, here in the Tampa St. Pete area. And once we get that southwest wind, west and southwest wind, 
later tonight into Wednesday, even Wednesday night, it's going to push the water up. And that's why we have the storm surge warning of four to seven feet. Right now, the wind is southeast, so that's an offshore wind. The water came up briefly because we had that squall. And when we were on the air, the water came around here as it hit. This is all dry before 220 Eastern. Now we've got this uh, pool. You often see this on beaches as the tide goes out. It's not an oxbow lake, of course, but this water is going to sit here. It has nowhere to go. We're not going to get much evaporation and we'll have more water coming around that seawall guaranteed later tonight and tomorrow, just depending on high how, how high the surge is. On the radar, we have some storms coming our way from southwest Florida, but they are weakening. Uh, certainly not very heavy rain anymore, and we may get another shower or two in the next hour or so. But again, it's going to be later on tonight as those outer bands come in at us, and we uh, see what kind of wind we will get out of those. I suspect at least a 50-mile-an-hour gust, if not 60. That's really the question right now, how close do those bands get to us with a storm going offshore later on tonight. Right now it's about 200 miles, uh, plus or minus, to the west of Marco Island. And then uh, we'll see how the surge turns out. Hope for the best. You prepare for the worst. Run from the water and hide from the wind. That's what we say here at the Weather Channel. Mike, thank you very much for the update. Could be a, a very high-impact event, I think, to a lot of people's surprise there in Tampa and St. Pete. So appreciate the report so far this afternoon.